From the Journal of Aphromus Long Journey Pilgrim With notes by Avos Thor, scholar of Reeve Library Rock Day, 19th cycle, 7th year, 81st turn 45th day in the trees We are finally out of the swamp I'm glad to be free from there It could have been worse but I hope not to see it again. Early this morning, we hit a fork in the road, and, since either seemed as good, took the right. We travelled for hours, and the path was very uncomfortable, full of rocks to trip over. Torn was in somewhat better shape, being able to step lightly over them, but this slowed him down as well. By late afternoon, we were both feeling out of sorts. We were just about to stop and rest when we saw something unusual. It was a big metal structure sticking up above the trees. It looked like a building, but there were things moving on it, and so we decided to keep going. Torn was very curious. We soon walked around a bend and saw the whole structure. It was big, nearly four stories tall, and it seemed to stretch a quarter mile in either direction. The moving parts were cylinders moving up and down, giant gears turning, and other machinery. There were people there, too. They were crawling all over the machinery, climbing up, climbing back down, and pressing buttons in various places. They looked like humans, though Torn said that they clearly weren't, having pointed ears and grey skin. We walked up to one of them, and asked what the machine was. He told us that it's the engine. He said the word as though it was something very important. He then told us that he's only a sub-technolite third class, and that we should talk to the Abbott engineer. He told us where to go, and so we went around to the other side of the machine, where there was a stairway up. We climbed up to the top, and there saw a man with a clipboard, looking over various gears and tubes. He made notes on his papers, grunting in satisfaction. Then he saw us, and looked very dissatisfied indeed. Who are you? he asked brushing back his long, white hair in irritation. He had hair on his face, as well as on the top and sides of his head, and it reached nearly to his stomach. We told him who we are, and what we're doing walking through the woods. He looked at us with suspicion, and then told us that he and his were the monks of the engine, charged with protecting it from harm. The engine, he explained, ran the universe, and that they had to keep it running smoothly. He went into a long history of the engine, telling us that it had been made by the Grand Architect, made with the tools of creation to keep things running when he wasn't watching. If anything went wrong, it could spell disaster. Note, I am familiar with the Monks of the Edge. The monks of the end time, the monks of the enigma, and the short-lived monks of free enterprise. But I am not familiar with the monks of the engine. Their beliefs seem similar, however, to the Garaldi tribe of the Squampo jungle, who believe a conch shell controls the tides. We listened politely, and then said goodbye. They are clearly mad, all of them. But they believe it, and we felt it best not to argue. We walked back around, and by chance we noticed an open panel. Inside the panel there were a number of buttons, including a very large red one. Torn looked at it for a moment, and, making certain no one was watching, reached out and pressed the button. Nothing happened. He pressed a few of the other buttons before I took him by the collar 
and pulled him away. I felt there was no point in incurring the monk's wrath. We made camp several miles away, under the ruins of an old tower. 